I'm about to show you incredible examples of ruins from lost ancient civilizations that are now, somehow, under the ocean. But what is stranger than finding lost ancient cities underwater is the fact that there are so many different examples of them in throughout almost every corner of the Earth's oceans. I mean, whether it's ruins from a lost ancient Egyptian city that was discovered under what is now the Mediterranean Sea, made up of massive statues and stone boxes that were cut with remarkable precision, as well as stone columns and many other things, including even that of a sphinx, have all been found at this impressive site. But why on earth is this ancient Egyptian city now 25 feet under the ocean, and as far away as 7 kilometers, or 4.5 miles, from the modern-day coastline of Egypt? That's further out than the eye can see, as the average person's ocean horizon from the beach is barely over 3 miles, or 5 kilometers away. This site is located off the coast of Alexandria, and was once the ancient port city of Heraklion, but is now an archaeological treasure trove of artifacts and stone structures that continues to be excavated to this day. Surveys have revealed 2,500 pieces of stonework and 70 large monolithic blocks, as well as an obelisk, and many broken stone columns and pillars as well. Now, the Mediterranean Sea itself has to be the jackpot for lost ancient underwater ruins, as they've been discovered in so many places throughout this entire region. From off the coastlines of Greece and its islands, to the coasts of Italy and other islands throughout the sea, including Sicily, Crete, Malta, and others that are scattered throughout the region. The ocean-battered remains of structures consisting of large cut and stacked stone blocks, but now we can only imagine what places like this looked like before they were consumed and tattered by the sea. In fact, here you can see the added CGI to the crumbled remains of a structure off the island of Crete that paints us a picture and reminds us that these structures once had walls and a roof. There are also many different statues that have been found in places throughout the Mediterranean that were once within courtyards, entrances to businesses, and even inside the living rooms of homes and palaces. The leftover stone dividers that made up courtyards, to even the submerged resting place of a bathhouse, which included extravagant solid stone bathtubs, where people once bathed within the privacy of their cozy estates. Even the preserved remains of a tall stone archway leading through a wall that once led to who knows where, but perhaps a place or path of significance at one point in time. And I have to say that I find images like this one to be so thought-provoking. The incredible architecture and design of artistic tile flooring that was once within the lobby of a building, or perhaps the living room or foyer of some rich ancient person's villa, something tells me that none of the people who once walked upon these various places had any idea that where they were standing would one day be hidden beneath the waves of the ocean. The eerie remains of what were once streets and walking paths, to even the solidified tracks of ancient cart ruts that formed a path where people once traded and traveled through every day of their lives. Of course not knowing that it would all be submerged among fish and coral reefs for thousands of years until us, their future ancestors, would one day come along with our inconceivably more advanced technology including cameras, sonar equipment, motorized boats, submersibles, and even our simple yet highly sophisticated scuba equipment. And here we are now, viewing these sites on YouTube from our phones and computers that are connected to our invisible Wi-Fi. What an amazing time to be alive to see this stuff. And I wasn't kidding when I said that these underwater sites are all over the place. And so far, I've only shared a few of the places scattered throughout the Mediterranean, which I'll be coming back to in a moment to share and discuss more of. But some of the deepest underwater ruins that have been discovered are found all the way over off the coast of India within the Gulf of Cambay. These ancient ruins include cut and stacked stone blocks and other relics, some in the shallows, but many of which were hidden deep under the waves of the ocean for several thousand years. In fact, possibly more than 9,000 years, which, if true, would raise many more questions than we already have about this mysterious site. But one thing that makes it so incredible is that these ruins have been found as far away as 12 and a half miles, or 20 kilometers, from what is now the modern-day coastline of India. And get this, at depths of 40 meters, which is 131 feet deep. How and why? 
Some consider this to be remnants of the ancient civilization of Draka, which, according to legend, is the hometown of Lord Krishna, a place that many believe to be just a myth. That was until these ruins were discovered 131 feet below the surface, which, of course, baffled the so-called experts that said it never existed in the first place. However, it's still the subject of debate and uncertainty and needs further study. But regardless of who once lived there and when, it's still 12 and a half miles from the coast. In other words, this site is four times further the distance than the average person's ocean horizon from the beach. And not only that, it's more than 100 feet deeper than the submerged Egyptian city I just showed you moments ago. Even as we go to the other side of the world, to the shallow waters off of the Bahamas, there is a site commonly referred to as Bimini Road off of Bimini Island. Look at these photos and think for yourself. This potential ancient road is now 18 feet or five and a half meters below the surface, which is shallow enough to free dive. This linear path is a half mile or 0.8 kilometers in length and consists of three predominant sizes of blocks. Some as small as one to two meters or three to seven feet in width. Many others are 10 feet and the largest grouping of stones are 13 feet or four meters wide. This so-called road is of course the subject of debate. However, I suspect that it is indeed the remnants of a lost civilization that existed thousands of years ago when much of the Caribbean was actually land. If these are indeed ancient remnants, then I can only imagine what else is waiting to be found below the shallow blue waters that cover large sand flats throughout the Caribbean. What could be laying just feet below the sandy bottom? But speaking of a debated site, something located not far away is the so-called Cuban underwater city or pyramids. At the dark depths of nearly 2,500 feet deep or 750 meters down on the ocean floor and off the west coast of Cuba, this made headlines around the world upon its initial discovery in 2001, but has been seemingly forgotten in the media ever since. Do these sonar images actually depict man-made structures, and if so, how did they get this deep while staying intact enough to be identified? And if these are ancient ruins, how old would they have to be? And could they be in any way connected or related to the pyramids found not far away in Mesoamerica? But what you need to know is that this image here was created from this sonar image here. This animated rendition was created on someone's interpretation and may not necessarily be accurate to its true form. What we do know is the last study of this place, at least that is known publicly, was back in 2001. The researchers visited this site twice, the first time when their sonar image was taken, the second when they lowered a submersible down to capture photos. And apparently these were the best pictures taken which they claim could be of cut stone blocks that are some eight feet long, but really it's hard to tell anything from these blurred photos. It's also worth mentioning that the same people that found this site acknowledge that it may not be man-made at all and that it needs to be studied further. They're not trying to convince anyone that it's a pyramid or that this site contains cut stone blocks. I mean, I certainly can't tell anything from these images and I don't find the comparison of the sonar image to the animated one to be similar at all, but then again, sonar imagery is not something that I've ever studied or learned. But it is nearly 2020, so really, we are overdue for someone to obtain new, high quality camera footage or pictures for additional examination. Definitely leave a comment and share what you think about this site and any other details of it that you may be aware of, but that aside, let me take you to the other side of the world to what has to be the most highly debated underwater site on Earth, known today as the Yonaguni Pyramid or Monument, which is right off the beach of the Japanese island of Yonaguni, which by the way is actually closer to Taiwan than it is to Japan, but this structure consists of incredible formations that boggle the mind with wonder as to what's possible. Is it natural or is it man-made? And if so, how could it be possible when it reaches depths of 26 meters or 85 feet at its base and 5 meters or 16 feet from the top of the structure from the surface? Creating the big question, which is, is this a nearly 10,000 year old man-made structure that was later consumed by rising sea levels or simply a freak anomaly shaped by strong and unusual tidal forces within its vicinity? 
The first time you see these captivating images, it's hard to think even for a second that this could be 100% natural. I mean, look at those edges. Look at all the different forms and shapes of the rock that seem just too odd to be solely a natural phenomenon. Some even suggest that there is an eroded face carved into a lower corner of the rock, and some suggest that there is an archway made of cut and stacked blocks also located on the lower part of the formation as well. Puzzling details and images like this really make you wonder how this could be totally natural. The first time I saw this, I thought that there is no way that this could be totally environmental, not for a second. Why? Well, <laughs> because just look at it. Since when does nature create straight edges and angles, at least to this size and scale? I mean, why haven't we seen other natural examples comparable to this one elsewhere around the world? However, many experts who I do respect, including Dr. Robert Schock, who is a geologist at Boston University, has studied this site in person and now argues that it is indeed natural. He even points out that the apparent right angles are not perfect at all when inspected more closely. I have to say that he does make a very persuasive argument that certainly made me doubt the possibility of this being a man-made formation. Although I am open-minded to further study and I'm not ready to completely dismiss the site, but I do have doubts. However, when I see images like this one, I have to ask, how did a strong current create this unique shape and with the center incision in the middle? How did the current do that in this specific area where there is no apparent rock or land feature blocking the ocean current, thus providing the unique feature that we see now? Even look at this incision, which is only several inches wide, so no, those are not steps. Running down a terrace on the structure, how did the current, which is of course coming from the side of the structure, create this on the top, and why don't I see other examples of this occurring naturally around the world? Is it possible that this is a combination of both? Perhaps a long lost ancient structure that was consumed by the ocean in an area that has very strong and unusual tidal currents? Definitely leave a comment and share what your thoughts are on this one, because this is complicated. Do you think it's man-made? Do you think it's natural? Or could it be a combination of both? I'm very eager to read and see what people have to say about this one, but Yonaguni aside, and going back to my point that ancient underwater ruins are all over, let me continue around the world, this time to the Indian Ocean and the island of Sri Lanka, located at the southern tip of India. The submerged Konswaram Temple at Swami Rock was discovered in 1956 by archaeologists while scuba diving. At depths of 50 feet or 15 meters, the site today is highly protected, which is probably why it's hard to find great photos of it. However, you can still see remains of stone blocks, structures, and many different Hindu statues that now lay on the ocean floor, including this creepy looking head, the leftovers of a bust or statue. Just imagine if you were snorkeling in the ocean and randomly came across this thing. Now, it must be mentioned that much of this sank only a few hundred years ago, but one thing that's interesting is that other parts of it may be much older and could potentially corroborate ancient Indian tales of a land bridge that once connected mainland India to Sri Lanka. That would not surprise me, as satellite images from NASA seem to corroborate it. But as we continue elsewhere around the world, all the way over to Micronesia, which is located in the remote South Pacific Ocean, you can find the ancient and in many ways mysterious relics of Nan Madal, where much of this lost civilization has been swallowed into the shallows. What we see today is simply far different than this engineering marvel would have looked during this civilization's height so long ago, as they used great ingenuity in utilizing these volcanic stones for their structures, and of course not knowing that ocean levels would one day rise and consume their way of life, leaving behind mystery. The question becomes, just how quickly did this happen? However, you can see what the ocean does to ancient constructions, leaving behind nothing more than an unrecognizable heap of broken stones that slowly break down to sand, leaving behind mystery and further questions about lost ancient civilizations in the remote islands of the Pacific. And perhaps nothing is more remote than Easter Island, which of course has the mysterious Moai statues. It's always fun sharing images like this one, as most people have no idea just how massive some of these statues actually are. However, one image that most people have never seen before is this shocking image of a massive Moai statue that is laying on the ocean floor with marine life now growing on it. When I first saw this, I couldn't understand how I've never seen or heard 
of this inexplicable underwater statue before, which of course could have significant implications to the details that historians thought they knew about the Moai statues, particularly their age. But unfortunately, that excitement was good for barely 10 seconds, as my immediate Google search quickly informed me that this is simply an artificial statue that was a movie prop for some no-name film in the late 1990s. <laughs> Bummer. But that's how things go on the internet. There are fake things that some try to pass off as real or otherwise exaggerate. Whether it's in various email forwards or social media posts, not everything you see is real. In fact, let me clarify that these images here are not real and no, those are not underwater columns and this pyramid is not actually under the ocean. It's simply CGI. But unfortunately, not everyone is aware of that when they see these types of photos make their way across the internet. And that reminds me, if we go to Indonesia and the beautiful waters off of Bali, you'll find a submerged temple consisting of Buddhist statues and other relics, all of which are not actually ancient ruins at all, but rather an artificial coral garden that was placed there to facilitate the growth of coral reefs and generate tourism through the creation of a popular new dive spot. Same for the nearby Indonesian island of Gilimeno, where you'll find another coral garden, but this time consisting of 48 life-size statues situated in a circle, all of which were cast from real people. Some have referred to them as hauntingly beautiful. My first impression of this site was, yeah, it's a little bit creepy, but never mind that, as I love the idea of creating coral gardens around the world. But one thing I do wonder about regarding lost civilizations in the Pacific Ocean is that there are different legends describing a continent that once existed throughout a large area of the Pacific, and satellite islands existing today, such as Easter Island, Hawaii, Fiji, and the Samoas, to name a few, are essentially all that's left of this now submerged continent. Could there be any truth to this legend? This will be a topic I revisit in a future video, along with the legend of the lost city of Atlantis that was said to collapse beneath the waves. But movie props, CGI photos, artificial coral gardens, and legends of sunken continents aside, do you want to hear of a place in a country that may surprise you that has ancient ruins underwater from the largest ancient Greek city to ever have existed? Russia. That's right. However, let's not forget that Russia is massive. And I'm not referring to its Pacific coast, but rather the Sea of Azov, which of course was once part of the Mediterranean Sea as a whole, although its waters do still technically connect to it. This is the location of Phanagoria on the Taman Peninsula, which like I just mentioned, was the largest ancient Greek city to ever exist. Leave a comment if you've never heard of this place before or realized it is now submerged within Russian waters and beaches, but even Russian President Vladimir Putin has dived this large and impressive site. And here you can see different images of relics that have been found so far. And you can also see other aspects of this lost city that are now buried and being excavated along the shorelines. This is a very interesting site, and who knows what's waiting to be found as excavations still continue to this day, and it's a very large area. But you see, I wasn't joking when I said that the Mediterranean has to be the jackpot for lost ancient underwater ruins. Whether it's lost ruins in the shallows off of Spain near the coastal city of Seville, or on the other side of the Mediterranean off the coast of Turkey and the island of Kakova, this lost ancient Lucian settlement was partly overtaken by the sea due to an earthquake nearly 2,000 years ago. And you can still see the remains of a Byzantine basilica just 20 meters from the shore and 2 meters below the surface. Essentially, what was once the middle of the city is now the coastline. And going south of Turkey, off the coast of Israel, you'll find ancient ruins that date back some 8,500 years, making the site of Atlet Yam extremely old for even the ancients. These ruins range between 8 to 12 meters or 25 to 40 feet under the sea, and underwater excavations have uncovered artifacts and structures that include rectangular houses and even a well. What's crazy is that they believe that this was destroyed suddenly, likely due to a 10-story tall tsunami, which was potentially 130 feet high, that followed the collapse of Mount Etna some 8,500 years ago. Just imagine that. Even going back to the coasts of North Africa and west of Egypt, Tunisia has remains of incredibly large monoliths, the submerged remains of the Roman Neapolis, which spans an area of 50 acres. An underwater expedition has found streets and monuments, yet little is known about this ancient site. 
But the point is that something very impressive was once happening here, as these blocks are massive and potentially pre-Roman. But if we go to a more remote area north of Tunisia, there is a massive stone column laying 130 feet down on the sea floor in the Sicilian channel between Tunisia and Sicily. What's nuts is that researchers believe that it was submerged approximately 9,300 years ago at a time when sea levels were much lower. And by the way, this is the same depth and time frame as the ruins in the Gulf of Cambay off India's coast that I shared earlier. I find the similar time frame and depth below the surface interesting. This 15-ton limestone pillar consists of drilled holes, as you can still see today. The monolith is 12 meters or 39 feet long and is better appreciated in comparison to people scuba diving near it. The remote nature of this find should raise questions to everyone, especially since this thing is on the sea bank 60 kilometers or 37 miles south of Sicily. I mean, really, what is this thing doing here? And if you think that's strange and mysterious, let me remind you of a recent study on the Persian Gulf that I shared in a prior video. This study states that it is incredibly likely that a large ancient civilization lies buried beneath the Persian Gulf today, which is crazy considering it is 290 feet deep under the ocean today. They say it was above land for 100,000 years before being fully submerged around 8,000 years ago. And these pictures are of people scuba diving in the Persian Gulf, but unrelated to anything involving archaeology, but I'm showing you this to get you thinking of what could be laying just meters beneath the Persian Gulf sandy bottom. And this ties into the point of this video, which is essentially a continuation from my two previous videos, which heavily outlined the fact that lost ancient civilizations are all over, and in far more places than we thought possible. From the entire Mideast to the Sahara Desert, New discoveries are occurring more and more frequently and in places that continue to surprise us. Go watch those two prior videos and when combined with this one, you'll certainly be surprised at how much we don't know about our ancient past and how much is waiting to be discovered. Because mark my words, this is just the beginning of what's waiting to be found within our lifetimes and the ocean is a whole other frontier. I mean, let's remind ourselves of the awkward fact that we hardly know anything about our own oceans. Even Noah will tell you, and I quote, that more than 80% of our ocean is unmapped, unobserved, and unexplored. Hell, we haven't even found MH370, that massive Boeing 777 commercial airliner that disappeared closer to six years ago now. I've used this example before, as it makes an interesting point in that we know what it is, and we are actively looking for it, but still haven't found it. Whereas lost ruins hidden now under the ocean are simply not being searched for, like, at all. And here's something that will get you thinking. In 2004, a large ancient forest was discovered 60 feet underwater off the coast of Alabama in what is now the Gulf of Mexico, and has been completely submerged for tens of thousands of years following rising ocean levels at the end of the last ice age. But what's crazy is it wasn't even known to exist until 2004, following the wake of Hurricane Ivan from the year prior, which moved enormous amounts of ocean floor sediment and exposed the remains of this ancient forest. And get this, it was discovered on accident by a fisherman. Perhaps we should start studying the ocean floor following powerful storms because who knows what is constantly being exposed in one place and buried in another. So the big question many of you probably have right now is, how and why are there so many different ancient ruins found under the ocean? Well, several major underwater sites in the Mediterranean are the result of earthquakes and tsunamis. However, ocean sea levels have been rising for tens of thousands of years and have played the largest role in the depths that these sites are now at. For example, look at this graph of historical sea level rise, and you'll see that at the height of the last ice age, approximately 21,000 years ago, the ocean's sea levels were approximately 425 feet or 130 meters lower than they are today. Think about that. And then notice the sharp increase around 12,000 years ago, which is the result of the Younger Dryas climate catastrophe that I have cited in many past videos. And also note the steady rise in sea levels over the past several thousand years since. Now look at this graph that goes back 450,000 years and shows that there have been five interglacial periods, essentially sudden bursts of warming that followed much colder temperatures that facilitate the growth of glaciers, and change the climate and weather systems throughout the world. It almost seems to occur on a fairly regular occurrence, as if the Earth is actually a cold place 
far more than it is a warm one, at least in comparison to today's climate. Like I always say in my videos, research this stuff on your own and think for yourself, but with the data I just mentioned, particularly the ancient shorelines being now more than 400 feet lower than they are today, this can help us to discover more submerged ruins as we should be searching within the boundaries of known ancient shorelines. You see, that's how there are ruins 12 and a half miles off the coasts of India and 130 feet deep. The ancients had coastlines that were vastly different than ours are today. This should get us all thinking next time you're at the beach and looking out into the ocean. You may find yourself wondering what lies out there past the horizon under the ocean. What's waiting to be found? Are there ancient ruins out there? <laughs> you may find yourself turning to the person next to you and being like, so I saw this YouTube video with this guy named Jimmy that told me. <laughs> but anyways, this is getting a bit long, but definitely leave a comment and share any other sites that I didn't include in this video because there are quite a few. In fact, my original goal when making this video was to find every possible site and give all the details about them until I realized that it was gonna be like a two hour video, which some of you might want, but it wasn't gonna be very, it was gonna be boring and just way too much. So I'm gonna to have to revisit this topic in another video. So leave a comment and share any other sites that I didn't include in this one and share any other details about these sites that I did share that I didn't include in this video. But anyways, guys, hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment. But I'm Jimmy, my channel is called Bright Insight, and I have another video coming for you very soon. Take care, everybody.